Hi everyone. Hello, hello. So, um, let's see. Had a busy week last week. Got a lot of stuff done. Made more pickles this weekend because <laughs> I'm like cursed to make more pickles this year. Um, but luckily my cucumber plants are finally dying back a little bit. So fewer pickles in my future, which is great because that means it's more craft time, hopefully. Um, Let's see, I have, I have my new mug. It says I put a spell on you. It does not have wine in it. It has coffee in it this afternoon, but I did iced coffee. So, well, I just, I kind of did cold coffee. So I have, I have happy cold coffee in my happy new mug. Um, so it's not wine, although some days I wish it was, uh, but it's actually, I don't actually do coffee. I do, um, I make like espresso and then I make a latte because I can't, and I use blonde roast because I can't handle so, anyway, I have my coffee this afternoon. Mmm. And it's nice. It's a good, it, I did a good job on my brew today. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. Last week, super busy. Um, I traveled to Wisconsin. I saw my friend. I worked on a uh, quilt top and got most of it put together. And um, then we went to Chicago because, hey, Bev! Nice to see you. Um, we had to go do some stuff at the consulate because if you guys don't know, my husband's from India. So anyway, we had to go to Chicago. And uh, then we finally got home on Saturday. So like, I just I had a lot of travel. And then Sunday was like a whirlwind of trying to, you know, catch up with everything. I have not tackled the laundry yet. I'm a, I, I kind of need to do the laundry, but I've been avoiding it today. Um, so anyway, that's kind of where I've been for the last week, but we are preparing for a lot of fun things. Um, we have spin together that is coming up next month. So if you're a spinner and you're on the fence, join our team. We really want you like, just because we're going to have fun. It's not, it's not the competition for us. We aren't doing it to try to win the competition. We just want to have fun. Like, I want to see everybody. I want to see what you're working on for spinning. It'll be super fun. Uh, so Wednesdays for the rest of the month are really going to be focused on uh, Spin Together, which starts at noon, your local time, October 2nd, and ends noon, your local time, October 9th. Um, so Wednesdays, I'm going to devote to uh, cleaning and preparing your traditional wheel this week. Next week, we're going to talk fiber prep. And then, hi, Cheryl. And, um, yeah, then, uh, let's see. So we're going to do traditional cleaning and preparing your wheel and then fiber preparation. And then, uh, probably that Wednesday before I'm going to get out my e-spinner. We're going to talk about e-spinner prep. Uh, if you are going to use your e-spinner, which is totally one of the things you can do, you can either drop spindle, wheel spin, or e-spinner. So you've got all the options. Um, and whichever one is your most efficient machine is the um, is the machine that you're counted for. So like I will probably do my spinning wheel. That's my most efficient machine. So I will count as a wheel spinner. Anyway, Bev, I was um, up at my friend's house in Endeavor. Uh, so she's close to Portage and Baraboo. And that's north of Madison if you're trying to keep track. Close to the Wisconsin Dells. So that's where I was. Um, I have a friend that lives up there. She's actually building a retreat center. And one of the things I might do is offer a either a knitting or a lace making retreat. I haven't decided yet, or maybe both, um, up at her retreat center because I think it would be fun. So um, I've been working on kind of a little thing with her. She's a friend of mine that I found through rabbits. And, you know, developed into a crafty friend, too. So anyway, and today might be sort of a, a weird day. We're going to bounce around to a lot of topics. So Slow Yarn Crawl is over. And if you have not yet downloaded your PDF patterns or entered the regional prize contests, you need to go do that. Tomorrow is the deadline for that. And um, I'm going to pull the big winners either Wednesday or Thursday for that. Um, I still have to pull the shop winners today. Mm. Haven't gotten that done. Um, all kinds of, all kinds of fun stuff going on there. Um, 
but that's okay. And we do still have our year of self-care ongoing. Uh, September is back to school for everyone. So that's learn a new technique, whether it's a small thing or a big thing, uh, whether it's free or a paid class, it's learn something new. September is learn something new. Um, and learning is very good for you because it stretches your brain and it keeps you active and it can also be incredibly satisfying. So I said September was all about learning and I was going to work on, uh, the Sashiko, but I'm going to save that for later in October because we do have our stitch along coming up. Um, I have two kits left. If you didn't order your kit yet, um, I have... I have two kits left. <laughs> the other, I ordered eight, six have already been purchased and paid for. So I have two kits left if you did not yet get one. Um, they should be in the mail to me this week and I should be able to send those out, um, get those back out into the mail very soon. So cross your fingers, that's the plan. Um, and I'm hoping that next week, next Monday, we can do the stitch along. So I'm hoping that um, the next two Mondays in September will be stitch along. So cross your fingers that everything comes through. Um, I did order just a few more fun little things from Kariki Press because I love her. Um, and Tina sent me a whole bunch of thread and stuff because I'm going to start carrying a lot of the thread here um, in Missouri. So that's, that's kind of going to be my thing for a while. Um, Anyway, all kinds of fun stuff happening. Um, yeah, so stitch along and spin together prep. That's kind of the, the rest of the month for September. So now you guys know what's going to happen. And I did go ahead and I put a few events up. So if you want to follow along, you can, of course, you know, follow us there. The other thing you can do is go to the Black Sheep YouTube channel and make sure that you hit subscribe. I do try to put up all of my talks, all of my live Facebook talks on our YouTube channel. So if you subscribe, you will definitely get to see all of the talks. Um, in addition to that, I try to put up extra stuff on the YouTube channel and um, I put up extra stuff on Instagram and TikTok when I remember to do it because um, I'm not always great about getting it done like every week. But I try. I'm like, I'm really trying. There's just, there's a lot of social media to keep up with now. Anyway, Today though, today we're going to talk about Mediterranean Knotted Lace. Um, so here is my finished silver doily and it has issues, but um, I know what I did wrong. But here's my finished silver doily that I made. I was going to enter this in a competition for IOLI, but I did not, I did not finish it to my own satisfaction. So I may tear this off and, um, and do some of the rounds again, um, just to make it better for me, if that makes sense. Um, because I like the base. I did a pretty good job on the center of my doily, but I, I could have done better on the outside. Um, anyway, so we're going to talk Mediterranean knotted lace today. And, um, thank you, Bev. I like, it's pretty, I just, there's things that I would change. And the nice thing is that, like, I can just cut it off and do it again. Hang on. That's my dog. Abby, honey, Abby. Sorry, my dog's getting older, and sometimes she doesn't realize that I'm still in the house, and she's like, oh my god, you left me. No, I didn't leave you, honey. You're, you're just, I'm just upstairs. Anyway, so um, here's another little center that I'm working on. This is size 80 thread. Um, I, this one's not finished. I've just been using it as kind of practice, um, but I I wanted to make kind of a, an, a, a doily kind of thing with this size 80 thread. Um, but I want to talk to you today a little bit about the difference between um, the lace version of um, Mediterranean knotted lace and um, sort of a sturdier version that's called the Bila, which makes these lovely flowers and uh, leaves and things like that. So um, I want to talk to you about those two things. And I do have very sad news to report. My teacher, Elena Dixon, who... Um, wrote actually both of these books that we're going to talk about today passed away last week makes me very sad <laughs> like I'm trying not to cry because I really I mean I just I really treasured Elena and the knowledge that she had and the fact that she was able to translate it into two books um I am I was 
emailing Elena to try to get copies of her books here in the US. Um, but clearly that won't be happening. So I did contact the publisher this morning to see if there was any way that uh, they could sell me a smaller amount because um, they wanted they wanted to ship me a box of 30 books. And I was like, mm, I can't do 30 books in one title. Could we could we maybe like do a mix? <laughs> uh, so I'm trying to talk to the publisher to get um, copies of her books because I am going to start teaching Mediterranean Knotted Lace. I am going to do some online classes uh, this winter and um, I'm teaching this live in person at the Ozark Fiber Fling, if you'll be there. I'm also going to be teaching Mediterranean Knotted Lace live and in person at the California Winter Lace Conference in February. So, um, you know, I'm gonna to talk today a little bit about the difference between um, the Babila version, which uses a, um, a double knot, and the lace version, which uses a single knot. So we're gonna take a look at Mediterranean Knotted Lace today and I'm going to show you some things um, on kind of like how to get started and, and things of that nature. But I, um, I really love the Mediterranean Knotted Lace. I have plans to do some designing in the Knotted Lace. Um, I'm, st I'm still working on knitted designs, don't get me wrong. I love my knitting and I will never give up my knitting. But um, I have I found s sort of some freedom in the Mediterranean knotted lace. The knotted lace reminds me a lot of crochet because you can do more freeform stuff. Tatting I love, but it's um, it's much more structured in terms of how you can use it, uh, which reminds me more of knitting. And it's funny that I've gravitated now towards the crochet version of like Mediterranean knotted lace and the, you know, and knitting as my knit version. And it's because I don't do a whole lot of crochet anymore. And I still tat, I still teach tatting, I still like tatting. Uh, but I find the challenge of Mediterranean Knotted Lace more appealing at this time. So anyway, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, but I will be doing some more tatting this month because I have some samples that I need to design and pull together for IOLI next year because right now the conference is on and I am teaching tatting. I am going to be doing an online virtual tatting class on uh, Sunday, July... 17th, I think, 2022, and then I will be teaching an in-person class Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and I can't remember if I have a morning or an afternoon, but I have I have a four-day class. It's three hours each day, um, so it ends up being 12 total hours of teaching, and I'm teaching a whole bunch of different tatting techniques throughout that week. So if you are not yet a member of the International Organization of Lace, Inc., and you are intrigued by the many different forms of lace, I highly recommend that you sign up. They have a great full color um, magazine that you get four times a year. Yeah, four times a year. And um, they do a conference every year. And sometimes it's an uncon, like this year where it was online. But sometimes it's in person. Um, usually it's in person. The online thing was, you know, very different for them. So anyway, um, that is kind of what's happening um, in, in like, and what's going on uh, in the next like year ish for me. I'll be teaching at Winter Lace Conference. I'll be vending and teaching at Ozark Fiber Fling. I will be uh, vending and teaching at the IOLI convention next July. I will also be back at Hoosier Hills uh, next June in Indiana. So um, Franklin, Indiana, if you want to come to that. Um, let's see. Oh, and I, and I applied for Fiber U in, um, is it Lebanon, Missouri? It's not very far away uh, as well, which I think is also in July, but it's like the week before IOLI. So like I'm, I'm trying to get out there and teach and, and spread the love of lace and knitting and spinning and weaving and tatting and, and all of the fun things that I do. So having said all of that, um, let's take a look at knotted lace. All right, let me see if I can turn this and not make it too weird. Do, 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 do. And also not um, like cancel you guys, because that's what happened last time was I <laughs> accidentally turned my key, like whole phone off. That was so bad. All right. So, hey Angelus. Nice to see you too. All right, so here I've got some uh, knotted lace out. So this one 
is, um, of course, that big silver doily that you already saw. This is that center that I was working on. And then this is a little sampler that I was kind of making for, um, actually for one of the classes that I plan to teach. So I was showing um, how to go um, across and come back and then how to build and um, decrease and uh, then I was doing some, and I ran out of thread, which is why I'm, I'm over here. I was doing some lace work as well. Um, so anyway, the first, the first thing that we need to talk about is the difference between um, lace, which is this, uh, this beautiful thing. And oh, you're crocheting still. I still like crochet. I just don't do it as much. Um, I did, however, make melon hammocks for my melons this year. Although something killed them last week while I was gone. Uh, so this is Mediterranean Knotted Lace. It's gorgeous. This is um, my my book signed by Elena. And um, I, I love these books. I love that she has beautiful diagrams. Um, they're very clear, very easy to read. And I also love um, that she talks about sometimes you just have to uh, read your lace. Um, so this one I think I made. Let me see if I can find that one. Let me see. I have like a whole little pile. These are all things that I have made. Uh, some of them are better than others. <laughs> so this is one that I worked on in a class with her. And... I also made this one in class. Hopefully you guys can see. That's kind of too high, isn't it, here? I made this one in class. I made this one in class. Of course, now you really can't see it. There. Um, let's see. These were practice ones that I was working on. So here's just a little colored one that I was working on. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then here's another little colored one that I was working on. So... Um, and here's a little chain I was playing with, um, just doing a little back and forth beaded chain that I thought was kind of fun. Um, these are like all my little samples that I keep. It's not the one I was looking for though. Of course it's not. Here's another center that I'm working on as well because it's good to just practice your rounds. Um, helps you to become better. Some of the, um, some of the things that Elena and I talked about were in order to, um, have more consistent loops so that these loops that you see on her little chains are so consistent because she practiced. So it takes a lot of practice to be um, consistent at your loops when it comes to Mediterranean knotted lace. Um, there are some different techniques. So there's chains that have picots and you actually make big loops and then you make little tiny knots um, over the top of those to make these, um, these little chains right here with the little picots on them. So that's actually two rounds of work, not just one. And then um, there's closed loop knots and bows, which make, here, these guys, which are really fun. And then um, you can build uh, your sections, which is kind of the fun part with this. So when you are performing, I shouldn't say when you're performing, when you are making, uh, lace specifically. I wonder where that one went. I have this one somewhere too. When you are making uh, lace specifically, you are using a single knot. And in order to make the single knot, um, let me grab some thread and a needle and I will do that for you. In order to make the single knot, you um, let me see, can you see this on screen? It's an okay color. Um, and the other thing is I'm working in size 40. So I, I tried making some stuff in size 10. Um, that's what my, um, my teacher for my class with I was using, but I found the size 10 to be really clunky and very hard to work with. And I feel if you're going to start making lace, you are better off to start with at least 20, uh, if not 40 or 30, because you should get a feel for your lace in, in the thread that you will be using. Um, I know that 
she was thinking that you could just see your lace better. But for general purposes, I really feel that it's better to... Um, of course, I can't find my scissors now. Where are they? There they are. To uh, go ahead and, and use at least a 20 or a 40. So let's talk about lace and Mediterranean knotted lace. Now, I have gone ahead and I've only drawn off... Um, I don't know, like two feet, like 24 inches. Usually when I work, I work with about uh, 36 to 50 inches. And the way that you do that is by um, threading your needle. And I did order some uh, needle threaders because for the most part, I don't have issues. But every so often I do have problems trying to get my needle threaded. Now I do use a sharp needle. Um, I am using a Sashiko needle which I have found to be really nice because, you know, I do want to start learning Sashiko, but in addition to that, works beautifully for this. Um, again, our teacher was using sort of a blunt tip tapestry needle, and that's all right, but um, when you are learning, a lot of times you're going to be learning off of the edge of a piece of fabric, and that means you need a sharp needle so that you can poke through your fabric. So the key to um, Mediterranean knotted lace is that um, when you are making your lace, you are going to be using the single knot. So to make the single knot, you will have, um, to get started especially, we're gonna have the tail of our thread. So this is our tail right here, over the top of our needle. And then for some reason, I like to grab the, that tail with my pinky, I don't know why, but I do. Um, you're going to lay the tail over the top of your thread and then you're going to grab the thread that you have pulled through the eye of your needle and pulled down. And you'll notice that I have a, a decently long section of thread um, hanging down from the eye of my needle and that's so I don't um, have issues where my thread gets all wrapped up and makes a knot where it shouldn't. Uh, but anyway, you're going to lay that thread over the top of your needle and then we are going to go counterclockwise and that's it just the one time and pull through and tie your knot down so this is your very first knot right here that's all it is and that's what we keep repeating all the way across now i'm using single knots because we're making lace so you want to make sure that when you make your next knot that we keep spacing um, appropriately and um, making loops making equal loops just takes practice it really does it takes practice um, it's not really based on the size of the knot necessarily it's based on the amount of thread that you feel like leaving between your knots so you can make large loops or you can make small loops but if you make smaller loops then you're going to have um, a little more closed appearance and you just have to be consistent throughout and once you kind of find your rhythm that's what's your that's what you will make and that, that there's nothing that you'll be able to do about it but it takes a lot of practice so the best thing that I can say is you know don't make projects just practice all right so for our second knot I'm going to stick my again sharp needle through that fabric bring the thread over the top of my needle and then pull that eye thread and you'll watch me again counterclockwise and through and this is the point at which you can adjust your loop because if you pull uh, to the left you're going to close your loop down and it'll be smaller than you want if you pull to the right you're going to close the loop down and it will be larger than you want and so you need to make sure that when you are pulling that you pull straight out. So just kind of adjust the size of your loop to however you want it. And the best thing you can do as you're practicing is to go a little bit slow and then pull straight out and pull tight. Because we want these knots to be so tight that they have locked into place. I'm going to do the same thing again, just like this. Now, if I pull to this side, I'll show you, it'll make my loop much bigger. So here's the loop I was trying to make. Here's my big loop. Let's do it again. Now this time I'll make it too small. 
And when I pull, I will pull this way. And now this one is too small. So you can see this one is closer to this one, but still not right. And it really just takes a lot of practice. And you have to remember that as you are pulling, and as Elena kept telling me, you have to pull straight. Whoop, I didn't get enough fabric on that one. Do it again. Pull straight out. Just like this. And you have to turn your wrist outwards in order to get really good knots. So this is the lace knot because it's just a single knot. You're just making that lace and, uh, and that's it. And I'm not adjusting mine like I should be, but there we go. Just making our lace and this is just a base. Now the other thing is, um, your, your loops will arch some, but they don't arch um, as much as you think. Some of them will start to point a little bit just based on, um, let's see if I can get that in the frame, there we go, just based on the pull from the loops on succeeding rows. And, uh, and this one I was doing, um, Oh, I think these were long closed loops. I think this is what she calls them. Um, hang on. I'll just make sure that I have that correct. Names are always a problem with me. <laughs> Remembering closed loop knots. So these are just closed loop knots. I wasn't doing bows here. Uh, and those, again, just take practice. I did, however, see a video that I kind of liked where there was a gal using like a chopstick or something. Um, to make those loops. And I actually have a Pico gauge, a uh, Pico comb on order from Japan that I think might actually work really nicely for making uh, consistent closed loops, but we'll see. Uh, the more that you practice, the better you get to. So anyway, this is, is your basic um, knot for lace. Now, there is also um, a, a different knot that we use for uh, more substantial work in making these guys, which are these gorgeous flowers. Look, beautiful flowers. This is, again, another book by Elena. This is the Babila Knotted Lace Flowers. Um, and, and these are the flowers. I have made, Oh, I think one of these flowers, but only one so far. I should make more of them. But this one, you want to use a um, a double. So, let's see if I can show you. There we go. A double knot where you have your thread wrapped around your needle twice. And the reason that you do that is because it closes the loops more. Um, it makes a bigger head in between, and so it makes a more substantial um, filling for these flowers than what you get with lace. Uh, there are some techniques where you, you do more filling in lace as well, um, but what you'll be doing are uh, what they call straight return loops. So you take your thread all the way across, and then you work off of it. Um, you're also going to be closing your loops down a little bit tighter. And again, you'll be using those double knots and all of those things will make it um, a much tighter, fuller, uh, more solid fabric, even though it's still lace. So in order to do that, it's the same motion, same idea. You're just going to bring your thread over the top of your needle. You're going to grab the thread off of uh, your eye. And again, I just, for some reason, I've started holding my thread with my pinky. And then instead of wrapping once, you wrap twice. And pull your needle up and through. And it just makes a more substantial knot. And one of the things that... Um, people struggle with is getting their knots tight enough because you do not want your knots to uh, 
float around on your thread. You want to make sure that your knots are nice and tight so that um, as you are locking them in place, they don't float and uh, they don't come apart. So picking these apart is not really possible because uh, it's very, very difficult. It can be done if you're careful, but most of the time you'll be cutting out mistakes. Surprisingly, it is kind of therapeutic to cut your mistakes out in here. So here's the difference. I don't know if you can even see this, but um, double, 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 and then these are all single not heads. And here's one where I didn't quite get it in the fabric even. I was just like on one thread along the edge. So doubles versus singles. Now you can also do triples. So you just wrap it three times. And that will, of course, make your knot larger. But it also means that it can be a little more difficult. There we go. To close it down. Um, most of Elena's works do not use the triple knot um, because usually a single or a double is plenty. So, and again, you turn your hand out in order to get a nice tight knot. So there's a couple of triples. Anyway, and a lot of times you'll find with your Mediterranean knot lace that you will need to dangle your thread so that it will untwist, especially with Elizabeth. I found the Elizabeth to be very twisty, and that is what I'm using right now. I'm using size 40 Elizabeth. The 40 is not as bad as the 20 or the 10. Those tend to um, gain a lot of twist as you're working. So far, I've really liked... Um, the 40 is okay. I really like the 80, the size 80 Elizabeth for Mediterranean knotted lace. Um, I don't have to dangle my thread. I don't build up as much twist in this one. So I really like my size 80. I also really like, um, this one's done in Olympus. I really like the Olympus um, for the Mediterranean knotted lace. It's, it's just got a beautiful feel. It's gorgeous for tatting as well. Um, but that is that one is made with Olympus. So... I could definitely recommend both of those. Anyway, so I just wanted to give you um, a little look at some Mediterranean knotted lace and talk a little bit about the difference between single knots, double knots, and when you would use them. So when you're actually making your lace, when you're really doing you know fine lace like this, these are all single knots. They should be you know made tightly. Uh, you'll find that as you work, sometimes. Um, when you do increase rows that you'll end up with a piece that kind of bows and and scoops up like this and i think i've showed you that before but as you continue to work it does um begin to lay flat and um in addition to that uh practice practice makes a huge difference so this is one of my like first pieces i didn't finish it but this is one of my first pieces um, I clearly have like some issues in my tensioning. There are things I didn't do as well here. Um, but this does show you how you can take a small round of fabric. And, um, this is actually a crochet chain, um, border that is used as the stabilizer so that you can, um, have a round of fabric in the center and then build out from there. You can also build open centers or this one's got a closed center. Um, so all of those things are possible. And then I don't have my flower. Um, one moment. Let me see if I can grab my flower. <clears throat> DMC works really well for this too. Hang on. Sorry about that. Ina, this is, I gave this to Ina. So this is what I made in class, um, for my IOLI class. And... Um, it has some embroidery on it that's, it's okay. I, there's things I would change about it, but I just did it the way that it was written in class. Anyway, so, um, this is the size 10 thread. You can see a huge difference between the 10 and the 80 in the fineness of the stitches. Um, this one is more like a, oh, more like a 20 ish, um, maybe a 30. This one is 40. So. Oh, sorry about that. That was my watch. Um, so these are my 
like practice pieces as I'm going along. But this one is a flower. You can see uh, using the double knots, it really closes it down. It makes it much, um, much more dense in terms of the fabric of um, the lace that you're making. And um, these are all single knots. This one has double knots. So you can see this one's just naturally more open because the knots are a lot smaller. And I also work to pull them very tight. Um, that's one of those things that Elena would continue to tell me in class. Just a little tighter, Kelly. Next one, just a little bit tighter, Kelly. Um, anyway, so something that I will be telling my students. Just a little bit tighter. <laughs> because you want a really nice firm knot and you don't want it to slide when you're pulling on it like this. Like you don't want these knots to slide. Uh, it's okay if the loops kind of move a little bit, but you don't want the actual knot to slide. So there's that. Um, anyway, I don't know. Does anybody have questions about Mediterranean knotted lace? Not that I was, I'm not doing a full lesson. I just want to show you some of the differences. And then, um, like I said, I I'll be teaching this in person at um, Ozark Fiber Fling. I'll be teaching this in person at the Winter Lace Conference in California. And again, um, I am going to be offering some online classes as well in kind of, um, I'll do different classes. We'll do beginning um, lace and we'll do beginning uh, babila. Um, and honestly, you could, you could start with either and then move to the other. Gosh, that was confusing. You could start with lace and move to the flowers. You could start with the flowers and move to the lace either way. Um, but I have some ideas for what to do. Elena had a really cute pattern uh, that made butterflies. And um, looking at, at, at all of the work that I've been doing, I've had ideas as I've gone along on um, doily patterns, edging patterns, um, and, and like animals, because you could build little animals out of this. So um, I'm going to play with it over the next year and see where I can, I can get with it. Um, but I really love Mediterranean knotted lace. It's very simple. It doesn't take a lot of tools. Um, you do want to make sure that you have a longer, sturdier needle. Um, you can use a tapestry needle if you're really worried about poking yourself. Um, because of course this is very blunt versus, um, the Sashiko needle that I picked because I was going through fabric. Um, but I really like the length and the point on the Sashiko needle, because if I do have to go pick something out, I can at least make an attempt. That one's not going to come out, but you know, I could at least make an attempt. Um, tiny scissors are your friend as well. And like I said, it's really satisfying here. You want to cut these off. I'll show you how to cut them off. It's really satisfying to go in and cut these off. And to cut them off, you just cut at the knots. Is anybody freaking out yet? Watch. Boom. <clears throat> Goodbye. And um, as you cut at those knots, see they just pop right out. Uh, so yeah, I'm just cutting off each little knot as I come to it. And then when you just sort of pick it out and pull and look, it just comes off just like that. So if you make mistakes, it's really easy to back out. Um, and I always follow Elena's advice of um, how to add thread. So I can, sh I can show you that quick. So how to add thread. Um, you always add thread um, kind of at the beginning of a motif, even if you have to sacrifice a little thread to do it. And when you are finishing an old motif, you bring the tail up and put the new one over and you make your knot just as you normally would. And what that does is it captures the old tail underneath and sets the new tail here. Uh, and then you capture it like one more time. Oops, it's too quick. There we go. And then uh, when you would come back around to this, you could just trim this off because this is now caught under two knots and it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, and then when you would come back around to this piece, you would just, uh, you know, take it whichever direction you were going and bring it up, lock it down with one, um, one more knot and trim that one off as well. So usually I wouldn't trim these until I came back to them um, as I was working, but because I was showing you. So anyway, there.
And then I don't try to hide my tails. I try to have very firm knots that don't come undone so that my work isn't going to unravel because there's nothing to unravel. So anyway, uh, if you're at all interested in Mediterranean knotted lace, feel free to go ahead and um, pop me an email. My email is kelly, that's K-E-L-L-I, at symbol blacksheep, A-T-O-R-E-N-C-O dot com, so blacksheep at Arenco dot com. Um, I would be delighted to talk to you about Mediterranean knotted lace, and I do want to set up a class for this because I think it would be a lot of fun online. Um, it will probably be in November, probably mid-November after Ozark Fiber Fling will be the earliest that I can offer this because I do have to get all of my materials ready. Um, but but I want to teach Mediterranean Knotted Lace. I really like this. Um, I really like this lace and I want to make sure that it continues to be shown and shared um, yeah, with everyone that I can. So um, like I said, I did contact um, the, the wholesaler um, for Milner Craft uh, to try to get copies of these books in the U.S. So if you are interested, um, I am going to put these up as a pre-order on the Black Sheep website just as soon as I can um, because I am going to get them in. We are going to sell them and, and I'm going to keep making knotted lace because one, I like it. And two, Elena was just a wonderful person and the best way that I can think of To honor her is to keep teaching this lace that she taught and loved so much. So anyway, I'm a little bit teary. You can't see that, but I'm a little bit teary. All right. Um, so hang on here. Let me turn this around. See if I can. Oh, sorry. That's my hand. Uh, <laughs> not shut you off. There we go. All right. And see, I'm a little bit teary. I'm a little bit sad. Because I'm going to miss my Elena. Anyway. Um, oh, well, I'll just hold it up here. So, yeah. That's the plan. I am going to keep talking about um, Mediterranean Knotted Lace in the future. And, um, yeah. And it's Elena Dixon. That's right. And uh, I am going to do some online classes as well as some in-person classes. Um... If I can ever get back out to the shop in Oregon, if things get better, <laughs> then um, I'd love to teach out there again as well. So um, anyway, I I'm, I'm, I like my knotted lace. I love my tatting. I love my knitting. I love spinning. Like, I love everything that I do. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do some knotted lace for Elena. So anyway. All right. If you um, missed kind of... Ooh, sorry. If you kind of missed uh, some of my earlier chit chat, make sure that you continue to post your year of self-care. Remember, this month is learn something new, even if it's something small. Uh, hopefully you learned a little something about Mediterranean knotted lace today. So see, that counts. Um, remember to keep posting your um, pictures on social media and tagging Black Sheep Fiber Emporium so that I can find you. That's the key uh, on Instagram and Facebook, especially just tag, hashtag Black Sheep Fiber Emporium so I can find you. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where I go ahead and I put all of these Facebook live chats as well as other things. Um, and in addition to that, I have some books that I'm going to be putting up in the pre-order section. Uh, I'm going to put both of Elena's books up, but I also have, um, if you're in, into Tunisian crochet, there are... Um, a couple of new Tunisian crochet books, and there's a new uh, like Spinning 101 book that we're going to bring in, and there's this really cool Icelandic mitten, it's color work, Icelandic mitten book that I'm going to put up as well. So I have some really fun new books to post um, that'll be up for pre-order, and remember when you pre-order, it really helps us because then we know that we have books committed so we can bring them in and ship them right out to you. Um, and Tamara, yes, I am going to take care of getting your book in the mail. I have it mostly packaged. I have to do all of the, uh, the addressing on it so that I can take it to the post office in the morning. Um, cause you know, I have an almost three year old and it's been a day. So anyway, 
Uh, go do the things that you love to do, hopefully crafting, and uh, remember to take care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, and craftually. Make sure that you're doing a little something every day. I had a lot of fun last week quilting and knitting, and um, I'm hopeful that I will finally finish up this uh, shrug pattern that I've been working on so I can release it. I'm a long ways away. I'm not even halfway done with it, but one day, one day it'll be done. And remember, for the rest of the month, we are going to really be focused on um, spin together, and we're also going to be focused on the stitch along. So again, um, I have two extras that are coming right now. If you did not get a kit, go order it on the website so I can get it shipped out to you ASAP. I have two extras coming. Now, um, you know, if I sell out, just pop me a message and I can add um, another order. But I, I had to email Michelle and like kind of beg to, um, to get the kits early. So I'm like, could you please maybe just like fit in eight of them if I order eight. So um, anyway, just, you know, just throwing that out there. All right. So until Wednesday, remember, we're going to talk about um, care and cleaning of your like traditional wheel, like my Ashford Traveler. Um, I will see you then. Take care of yourself. Okay.